Throughout the operating manual, there are notes, cautions, and warnings that highlight important information. Reading, understanding, and following the safety procedures listed will prevent possible injury while using this equipment. Proper face protection, such as a quality welding helmet, is recommended. The plasma arc is extremely bright and must be filtered to prevent serious eye injury. Be certain the eye protection is adequately rated for your process. This rating is referred to as a shade number. See the operating manual for the proper shade number relative to the output current used in each process. A sturdy pair of leather gloves is highly recommended to prevent skin burns. Earplugs or headsets are also recommended to protect against hearing loss. Other safety concerns are the proper use of gases in your process, avoiding fires or explosions, and preventing electrical shock. Again, the operating manual outlines the specific precautions to prevent these hazards. Welcome to the LM200 Welder Quick Start video. We'll start with the rear panel. The primary power cable can be connected to either single phase or three phase sources. For single phase input, disregard the red wire and connect the black and white wires to the hot terminal. Connect the remaining green wire to the neutral terminal. For three phase input, connect the black white and red wires to the hot terminal. Connect the remaining green wire to the neutral terminal. Using a small screwdriver or similar tool, set the input current by sliding the switch located on the rear panel to the appropriate setting. Also located on the rear panel is the remote device selector switch, which must be set to the appropriate corresponding connector. The connectors 14 or 19 pin, depending on the remote device used, are located on the front panel. Finally, the main power switch is located on the rear panel. This switch also doubles as a circuit breaker for the unit. Begin by setting the required weld process. Press the process select button located in the lower right portion of the control panel. Observe the LED illuminating the icon representing each process. The top icon represents stick welding. The next icon is for lift stick. The third is for MIG welding of mild steel. And the last is for MIG welding stainless steel. When using remote devices such as wire feeders or foot and hand remote controls via the 14 and 19 pin connectors, it is important to set the contactor and remote current functions accordingly. The functions are controlled by the two buttons located in the upper right of the control panel. The upper button toggles between the contactor panel control or remote operation. The lower button toggles between the panel current control and remote current control. In each case, the lower square icon and corresponding LED indicate the panel controls are active when lit. The upper circular icons and LEDs indicate the remote devices are active when lit. For operating the VS212 wire feeder, set both the contactor and remote amperage functions to the panel position. Various parameters may be chosen via the parameters selection button in conjunction with the process selection button. Repeatedly pressing the parameters button will index through the various settings indicated by the illuminated LED. When the process button is set to stick or lift TIG mode, the hot start, weld current, and arc control parameters can be set. Setting the process to MIG mode allows the weld voltage and inductance controls to be accessed. The control knob is multifunctioning for adjusting both voltage and amperage parameters. The type of setting and its value appear to the left of the control knob in the LED and digital display. The various parameters can be indexed and various values set by repeatedly pressing on the control knob. This concludes the quick start instructions for the setup and operation 
of the LM200 welder. The first step will be to install a wire spool. Open the case and remove the wire spool hub nut. Orient the wire spool so that the wire exits the spool from the bottom right. Be sure that the drive pin on the feeder engages the socket provided on the spool. Secure the spool with the wire spool hub nut. Set the operating parameters for your process. For stick mode, select CC for constant current. For MIG mode, select CV for constant voltage. The switch marked high and low toggles between the two adjustable feed speed ranges. In the high setting, the entire speed range from 50 to 800 inches per minute can be adjusted using the front panel knob. In the low position, the knob will control speeds ranging from 50 to 400 inches per minute for finer adjustments at lower speeds. The button marked 10A resets the breaker when pressed. To open the wire feed assembly, swing the pressure adjustment knob out and swing the upper roller bracket upwards. Next, feed the wire from the spool into the roller assembly by clipping off the bent end and inserting it into the wire guide. Continue feeding the wire over the rollers into the wire output guide and out through the gun cartridge port. Allow the wire to protrude 2 to 3 inches. Close the rollers and adjust the roller pressure in accordance with the chart inside the front cover. Attach the gun by inserting the wire into the cartridge. Firmly insert the cartridge into the gun port and tighten the gun clamp knob. Attach the trigger connector to the feeder. Attach the voltage sensing cable to the feeder and the opposing clamp to the workpiece. Now connect the gas line to the port on the rear of the feeder and tighten using an 11 16 inch wrench. Connect the cable on the rear of the feeder to a weld lead that is in turn connected to either the positive or negative terminal on the welder, depending on the process you are using. The wire feeder is now ready to operate. Turn on the power and observe the digital display on the front panel. The multifunctioning adjustment knob is used to set both the current and the feed speed. The rocker switches toggle between functions such as manual wire feed, manual purging, trigger wire feed, or continuous wire feed. For additional information, please refer to the operator's manual.